morning, good morning. This is where we ended up last night by this thing right here called the Continental Divide. But we did some research and I'm not for sure if this really is. It's fake. <laughs> it's not real. At least according to Google, we don't know for sure. That's true. I don't, is that elevation correct? Hang on. Okay, yeah, that elevation's correct. Okay. The actual Continental Divide is actually like 100 miles from here. So that's Literally. not that's not correct. Yeah. All this water, the water that falls here goes into the Sea of Cortez. So that's not real. But it is a pretty cool monument because this road was originally built by prison labor. Yeah. So, I don't know. Kind of a neat little piece of history. Yeah. So if you come to Bisbee and you want a free place to boondock, come here. Right here. Right here. Right there. Right there. Okay. It's really windy. We've had our coffee, had our breakfast. Bob made an amazing scrambled egg, scrambled egg breakfast. I had coffee in bed. It's just been a nice, relaxing, easygoing morning. But now we have to get in the we have to get in the van because we're headed to the mine. Yep. We're gonna go to the mine. The mine tour. It, our tour is at 9 a.m. But I just read the instructions and it said check-in is at 30 minutes prior. So we, we gotta, gotta go. we gotta go. We ride at dawn. <laughs> All right, lights are off, water pump is off, the vent is closed, the propane is off, skylight's closed, and shade is covered. The inverter's on, but that's because we're charging phones. Fridge is closed. I think we're good. Let's go. Let's go. There's our new rattle that I love so much. <laughs> I think it's the cabinets. Yeah, probably some of my sticky stopper things fell off, so I probably have to get some new ones put them on here. This used to be the only way into town before they dug that tunnel in 1958. Wow, look at you, Mr. Bisbee uh, knowing know. guy. Well, that's what happens when you've got hours and hours of time to just sit in the van and do nothing. Hey! Oh. Losing things. Oh no, things are falling. No clue what that is. Okay, so we made it to the Queen Mine Tours. Let us know if you've ever been to this. This is going to be interesting. I'm excited, a little scared, but mostly excited. Queen Mine Tours, Bisbee, Arizona. Let's go do it. But here we are. Are you ready? I am ready. Are you ready? I'm scared. Three,
we're gonna walk up here and check it out. Take your lights, some copper ore, point them right down at the deck at your feet. Now there's absolutely no copper down there whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. But keep your lights down for the simple fact if everybody puts their lights on this at once, it's hard to see. So with your lights down, look around pointing and circle my light. This flash pretty green wrapper. Some color of copper ore called mountain and that's what you're after. Watch out for your hard hat, you be falling off. <laughs> right up in there. Yeah. They were smelt, when they smelt that down here and, and a copper smelt through up to about 1910, you could get 25% copper out of that rock. Sweet home. Oh, it's good to be back where it's warm. <laughs> so for $16 a person, it was totally worth it. It was super cool. You got to ride on the little mine cart. Yeah, mine cart? Yeah. Back all the way into the mountain, like, I don't know, like 1,200 feet or something. Yeah. And you got to see, like, all the cool places, like, where, like, the... The supervisor would sit. They talked about how they would move materials from one place, like from one mine shaft up above, down below, so they could get it out of the mountain. They they actually showed this like cavern that they dug out where back in like the I don't know the early 1900s where they were digging and were able to like mine out all the minerals and how the the high quality copper that they were pulling out of there. They did a really really nice job of explaining everything. Yeah, far better than I could do. But right. the other thing that was really cool is the amount of money that they made. So they were making like 35 cents an hour, which doesn't sound like a lot. But, you know, he was saying that like a steak dinner with potatoes and, you know, the, all the fixings was like 25 cents. No, he said 15 cents. 15 cents? Yeah. He said 15 cents. He said uh, they made 350 a day. It was like 35 cents an hour, 350 a day. Yeah. And that was really good money. Right. And you could literally get like a steak dinner for... 15 cents. 15 cents. I mean, with everything. Come on. I know. They were making some good money back then for sure. Yeah. But you know what? They were risking their lives. Dangerous hard work for yeah. sure. Just like going into this, I have to say I was pretty nervous because I can be a little claustrophobic. Not not crazy, but I was a little nervous. And then once they said that we weren't going to be going down at all, it's literally just we're like going straight across into the mountain. I think a couple thousand feet, right? Yep. Um, ish. I was like, okay, that's okay. And then, then the guy said, and when we stop, there is like exits. <laughs> so they really calm you right away of like, okay, so we're not going to be stuck in this mountain. But um, my favorite part probably was that little trolley ride. If you call it a trolley, I don't know, mm -hmm. minecart trolley ride. That was really neat to just be going down um, those tunnels on it. I don't know. It was super fun. And it did not feel too tight or anything. And then each time we would stop them teaching us all about each section and what went on. And like, they showed us the toilet they had to use down there, which I found very interesting. Um, while this mine was open and operating, they only lost eight people, which like he said, eight too many, but, um, with how dangerous this type of thing can be, I was surprised that it was only eight. Um, thankfully that is all. About this, it is time to hit the road and go to our next stop, which is Tombstone, Arizona. Let us know if you've been to Bisbee and if you've went to this mine. And yeah, let's go to Tombstone and see what that's all about. Today is all about exploring Arizona. 25 minutes to our next stop. All right. 
Let's hit the road. Last night, we actually stayed right above this tunnel. Yep. Mule Pass, right? Mule Pass. This is a rough tunnel. It's so shaky. Yep. So I really think that the mine tour and the museum walking tour are both must-dos if you're going to Bisbee. You learn so much about their history and you get to actually see some pretty cool stuff. And I think that's really the only way to learn about it. Yeah, we went to the museum in last week's video. It was like 10 bucks a person. I think we paid nine bucks a person because Bob's a veteran. And then this mine tour being 16 bucks a person, not bad at all. What a great way to learn all about like the town we were in which was Bisbee um, so much I didn't know because we're not originally from Arizona and so we are still learning uh, cool facts and cool things about Arizona and that was a hundred percent worth it so if you're on the fence of ever doing it that's a must do it sounds like our house is falling apart <laughs> We've got a couple of new rattles, I'm not sure what they're from. We made it to Tombstone, Arizona, which was only about 25 minutes from Bisbee. So, very quick, fast drive. smoking. So there is a really cool dry camping option right back kind of behind Tombstone. Yeah, so. That would be pretty nice. Yeah, that would be cool. Beautiful views. Okay, put in your mind. Are you getting them all? Oh no! Game's over, Parker! Shucks. <laughs> 1600? 1600? Yeah, the person before me had 1700, this person had 1800, that one had 2500, so apparently I didn't do that good. Oh, wow. Train life, rail car life. This is cool. Look at this. Okay, so this is where you would sit. Wow. I think this is for the crew members. I don't think this was for passengers because this is a caboose. So oh. I think they would work here and then, like, they were. They would manage the brakes and like sit here and watch the train, I think. Oh. That's why it sits up higher than the rest of the other cars. 
like a legit like stove to heat this thing. And then of course they had a desk. And I'm assuming this was a bed where they could sleep. Look at this sink, they have like <laughs> running water in here. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. This caboose was built at Los Angeles in January, February, 1941. know what we're doing but we're gonna get a newspaper. I remember from last time we were here you can get a newspaper from the day that I think it's why her well incident happened. Oh so I'm curious. Okay. And then mail me your house to all the issues. It's only twenty five bucks. And you and I have both oh so this is their printing press? Yeah this is from like the eighteen eighty six. Wow. Wow. Gas inner type machine. Ink plate, look at that, Bob. Yeah, this table. These are all flyers and stuff about Arizona State and Missouri. So, like, would they have to redo it every day? Well, I don't get this it. A, this is at a time when it was like, at best, you'd have a weekly paper, if not monthly. Oh. It's so time consuming to make all this. Oh. The Republic. Okay, so you're so they literally had to make all that weekly. And then like stamp. Yes. And then they would have to carry it by like horse and buggy to like each town, each community, so that they would have these papers. So news traveled very slowly. Unlike your phone where it's like instantaneously you know what's going on. So if you go to the OK Corral with your ticket, you get the free newspaper, basically explaining the whole thing. Thank you. Okay. We're going to try the OK Corral. God said it has good things. So we've been doing some research, and it looks like the OK Corral, we can't record it, and they fill up really quick. So because I don't think we're going to be able to do that, we're gonna go ride the stagecoach instead. Oh, this looks so good. Not very healthy, but looks good. <laughs> Get in my belly. BLT. Would you say the food was just okay at the OK Corral? It was okay at the OK Corral. <laughs> on to the, a stagecoach, yep. is that what they're calling it? Um, it has two drivers, two horses, and they just got back from a tour, and so they're giving the horses a break right now and giving them some water. And then, yeah, once we get started, it's 17 minutes long. Yeah, and for about 15 bucks a person, that's not a bad deal. Yeah, so it was 30 bucks to ride this, and it looks like drivers work for tips, so. Thankfully, we still have some cash. Yeah. So, yeah, this is going to be exciting. You were saying you saw some mics on them? Yeah, one of the drivers had a mic. So hopefully they kind of tell us some history, some facts. So it would be interesting to see what they say. Yeah. So here we go. Jason, I'll be your driver and your narrator today. Up here to my left riding shotgun is Billy. He's helping me make sure it all goes as smooth as possible. And the two fine horses we got up in front of us today, well, that's Jesse and Jake. You're probably going to hear me talk to them as we head around town. 
Well, now y'all just sit back and relax while we drag you over 140 years back in time when Tombstone was nothing more than a silver mining camp. Jesse, Jake, step out. Jake, step out. Go ahead, Jesse. No, I don't start to pull off and do anything you find the first of me. Let's go to stop the high rollers of the time to come to some far and wide to get a piece. And you can see that very same poker table still set up in the bird cage to this day. Come on, Jake. Now, before the bird cage was ever even built, that's where our first marshal, Fred White, was shot by Curly Bill Brothers. And you see Curly Bill and a bunch of his friends were having a good time down in Chinatown, and they just heard Marshall White was shot and run. And so they have four days to go. Thank you. Do you have any questions about any of it? Nope. nope. Thank you. Well, if you do come up with any questions, you can always come back. That was awesome. Thank you. Okay. That was fun. I learned a lot. Did yeah. you learn a lot? I did. That was actually quite informative. Yeah. Lots of details that, you know, like the last time we were here, I didn't know. Yeah. It was, it was a great experience. Worth it. And now, Bob wants to go look at a Stetson hat. Okay, nice how many of you think he needs a Stetson hat? Not big enough. <laughs> you got a big head. Seven and a half. But see, now that's too loose. Is that one too... <laughs> Seven and three-eighths. I need to try the right difference. Nope. I don't know. Oh, there you go. That's that's the fit. Is that the Mr. Bob? <laughs> that's. I don't know. Like I like the size. So what's your size? Five eighths, seven and five eighths. There you go. Well, what do you think? I think we need to keep chopping. That was. Uh... I like some of them, but they just didn't have my size. And the one that you wanted. That's true. But you think you're a Stetson guy? I think I might be. Okay, guys, let us know. Is Bob a Stetson guy? Do we need to get him a Stetson hat? I think so. You do, don't you? I do. He wants a hat. I think it's time for me to grow up and get one. All right, well. I think the video, I think we're gonna close up. I think that'll do it for Tombstone, Arizona. Yeah, at least on the video. Yeah, there is a lot to see here. A lot of stuff that we didn't show you, but you guys got to come here and experience it for yourself because it is a pretty cool town. Yeah, we had fun. So hope you enjoyed our little Arizona series of Bisbee, Arizona and Tombstone, Tombstone. Arizona. But that's it. I think yeah. we'll see you next week. Next video should be, we haven't went yet, but we're going to go to, there's an expo, Van Expo in Scottsdale, but it's a storyteller thing. Yes. It's all about storytellers. I'm hoping they have the hilt there. Yes. I really want to see that in person. So we'll see, but that's next week. All right. Until next time. Bye guys. Bye guys. Happy travels.